Hi guys, it's Gimbo here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the first and probably only video about No Man's Sky. Now, this is kind of a strange video to make for this channel because a lot of people consider No Man's Sky to be a dead game, to have no relevance in 2017 whatsoever. It came out in 2016, it flopped, people forgot about it and moved on with their lives and no one really touches it anymore. However, today I am here to answer one and only one simple question and that is, is No Man's Sky worth a purchase in 2017? In this video, I'm going to be looking at the game in its current state, nearly a year since it has come out. I'm going to be looking at what the game does well now, what the game perhaps doesn't do as well, Overall, concluding to whether or not this game is worth a purchase a year after it has come out. So a little bit of background information to the game itself. Just in case you don't know what No Man's Sky is, I will tell you what it is. No Man's Sky was a game released by a small indie studio called Hello Games in 2000. And 16. It promised an infinite procedurally generated universe with something like 18 quintillion planets to explore, which in basic terms is a load, a load of fucking planets. And the game became infamous for the lies that misled gamers and eventually led to the, the game's downfall. The front man of Hello Games, Sean Murray, was the guy that lied about everything in the interviews and he became associated with this failed game. Just to name a few of the lies that happened for No Man's Sky, a drastic variety in planet landscapes. In the E3 tech demo, first of all, you saw these like lush trees and massive dinosaurs. It didn't look anything like that. Unique looking animals that differed based on climate and they got bigger and more, you know, out of control like that huge snake in the desert as you get closer to the center of the galaxy. Huge space battles with meaningful factions instead of just the same copied and pasted alien over and over again. No loading screens. Sean Murray said you could fly to another solar system if you wanted to. But in reality, you have to warp there, which is essentially just a pretty loading screen. And of course, multiplayer. The game was promised multiple times to be multiplayer. Will you be able to play with your friends? Yeah. That you could see your friends. You could go on a planet and there could be someone else there already. This blew people's minds when he said this. It was crazy. And Sean Murray said a variety of different times that the chances of doing so are so low, you probably never will. But you can. And when the game came out, and they put it on their Twitter as well, the game isn't multiplayer. He said this. He said, No Man's Sky is not a multiplayer experience. Don't go into the game looking for that. So that is the game. That is No Man's Sky. That is why it is one of the most hyped up games, I think, ever. And why it ultimately did flop was down to the unbelievable amount of hype. But I bought the game probably only a few months ago. And I knew about the game. I knew the state it was in, I'd watched loads of videos when it came out, people complaining about it, reviews of it, I was clued up on the game. But for me, when No Man's Sky was initially, you know, in like the last week of uh, being released, and even like a year before at E3, I never gassed the game up. I thought it was impressive, most definitely. The idea of pretty much infinite planets was really, really crazy. I, I love the idea. It really did interest me, but I just never looked into it enough for me to get too excited. So yes, I thought it was cool. I remember going on holiday, reading a magazine on the plane that had No Man's Sky, and I was like, that's amazing. But then I just sort of forgot about it, and then before you know it, oh shit, No Man's Sky's out, I didn't even realise. I bought the game with full knowledge that it wasn't the game it was promised to be. I risked wasting my own money with full knowledge of how the game was, unlike most people who pre-ordered it and then eventually did get refunds. But I love the idea of endlessly exploring. I like these relaxing games like Euro Truck Simulator, Viscera Cleanup Detail. Games you can play casually, just pop on a bit of cold play in the background whilst you just wander around. You don't really have a goal, you decide what you do. I like the idea of No Man's Sky for that reason. The fact that you can come home after a hard day at work, get in your spaceship, fly around, look around on these planets, catalogue some animals, it's a great idea. And the concept 
sold it to me the most so there you go that is a pretty lengthy introduction to the game but let's talk about the positives of the game now first and foremost to some extent the game does live up to what it was sold on by that i mean there is 18 quintillion planets there is a load of solar systems with all of the planets and the moons like advertised they do kind of feel unique you know lesser so than they were advertised and they have their own animals and also the game does look so beautiful ridiculously beautiful the game has a photo mode which turns off everything on screen like your hud your health all of that shit, which means you can take screenshots. I have a whole folder on my computer dedicated to No Man's Sky screenshots. That's the only game I have a screenshot folder for. Sometimes you just have to stop and stare in awe at how beautiful the landscape is. When you land on this planet and you look around and if it's a lush planet, it's got really dense foliage and massive trees and there's, you know, animals grazing in a distance. It's beautiful. And for that reason alone, I would definitely say that it did live up to that. Yes, not as beautiful as that planet they modeled. It wasn't procedurally generated, they made it. But my point being, the game doesn't have the features it promised, but it still is the game that we wanted at its core foundation. Some people may disagree with that. Also, I want to talk about the first time playing the game. First time booting it up, being on this, this planet, your first planet. That initial excitement of looking up at the sky, seeing planets... And knowing you can visit them was just crazy. This is something which I saw in a load of reviews. I completely agree with it. When I first spawned in and, you know, I was going around on this planet, I was like, wow, this, this is my own planet. No one else has been on this planet but me. Out of all of the planets and all of the people playing, I'm the only one that's been on this planet and seen this planet. It's a huge feat. You know, it's incredible, even if it's not quite as advertised. And you can look up and you see spaceships flying over, you know, and, and you're seeing this moon and you're like, I can go there. That's not a skybox. It's ridiculous. The concept is amazing and well executed at that. I give the game credit for that. Next thing is that it is very easy to get lost in the game. By this, I mean, you can catalog animals and plants. Of course, you have to gather resources, just generally exploring, just wandering around aimlessly taking screenshots naming planets and solar systems selling items on the on the um galaxy network building bases there's almost too much to do yet it can get repetitive but the point being is that if you're someone that strives to get a hundred percent completion on every planet that will take you a long ass time but in that aspect you are getting your money's worth so that is something to note the game is repetitive but the content itself is quite extensive and i know a lot of people will disagree with that but it depends on the person also i want to talk about the foundations update so when the game got released and hello games just went silent they didn't say anything about the game a lot of people just thought that they had you know left the game to rot but then they released the foundations update kind of out of nowhere and the foundations update included a lot of fixes and changes to algorithms of the planets things like that but also included base building and the foundation update hence the name is claimed to be the foundation as you will for future updates and hello games have said themselves that the foundation update which is a pretty big deal base building is something people wanted this is minute compared to what they have planned so this means that the game is going to get updated now the issue with this is that hello games are really bad with their announcements they won't say if anything is coming out when it's coming out if anything is even being made you just have to hold blind faith they said that they didn't want to say anything about the foundations update until it was final but they still didn't say anything until it just sort of popped out of nowhere and i had an article on it it's promising i have faith that they will at some point include multiplayer i have faith that they will at this point in time be working on some kind of multiplayer feature with other players like they promised people in the game's modern community have gone into you know uh, the, the the files like data miners and they have found models for the actual player you can never see your player because it's first person but they have found the models for what your player would look like now this could just be in there for e3 purposes or just to make sure something like that but the point being is that who knows what they can produce in the future. People think it might be land vehicles. There are a lot of models to suggest that land vehicles are going to be in the game. But the game hasn't been left to rot, contrary to popular belief. Yes, they are very bad at explaining what's happening. That's their own fault. But I can see it being a good game in a year's time, perhaps. Maybe even being the game that they promised. And the last thing which I want to talk about 
is actually mods on PC. Mods on the PC version of No Man's Sky are very, very easy to install. There is a decent sized modding community and it just improves the experience of the game a lot more. Pretty much, the mods on No Man's Sky for PC make the game somewhat similar to how it was promised. There are graphics mods, there are better landscapes, so it improves the variety and generation. Planets aren't as boring and looking the same. There's also like low flying mods where you can uh, remove the restrictions on how low you can fly or how high you can fly, things like that. Reshaders that make space darker and like removing Instagram filters as well, things like that. Basically, if you bought the game on console, you're at a huge disadvantage because you have to rely on the actual devs themselves to make the game better. But on PC, modders are at work making it better for that reason i would probably recommend getting it on pc if you can run it because it's really not that difficult to run and of course we have to talk about the negatives of the game this is what people probably most care about at the end of the day no man's sky isn't anywhere near the game they promised technically speaking hello games don't deserve any money they get they falsely advertise this game they straight up lied to get money. That is a scummy business practice. And yes, they are amending their mistakes. They said that they're working on updates, but it bothers me and a lot of other people as well that they just flat out lied. Ethically, they don't deserve money in any way. They don't deserve the money that they got. So yes, in that way, I wouldn't recommend the game out of pure ethical standards as such. Pretty much, the game is missing features. That's the short and long of it. The game doesn't have multiplayer. It is scummy. And that's why a lot of people don't like the game. So that is a negative, And that's one I can't quite forget. Next thing is that the game lacks purpose. This is a big complaint which people have with the game. Why are you grinding? Why are you collecting resources and flying to other planets? Is it to explore? Is it to catalogue? Is it just to wonder? Or is it to get to the center of the galaxy? That's it. There's, there's no other incentive for playing aside from getting to the center of the galaxy or wandering around and enjoying the views. Those who struggle to find enjoyment in games unless directly entertained and will then go and do this, do that, you will find the game pointless, repetitive, and ultimately boring. Those who can find enjoyment in your own discoveries in the things you find and the stories you create will love the game. If not, chances are you probably won't like it. Base building has given a reason to play it to some extent and needs a lot of fleshing out. But my point being is that unless you're trying to complete the game as such, get to the center of the galaxy, there's really nothing else to do but aimlessly wonder. It's essentially a sandbox game without any missions. It's like GTA without a storyline. Or like one of the Stranger and Freaks missions if they were like five minutes long. That's what the game is. And that bothers some people. And last of all, it's still so expensive. The game is an indie game at the end of the day. But it still sells for £30 on G2A, which can get you the new COD if you really want to, probably Battlefield 1 and a bundle of other cheaper and frankly better games. It just shows a clear greed, because quite honestly, the game doesn't deserve to be £30. There's not £30 worth of content or quality in this game. If it was £10 at launch, I can imagine a lot of people would have preferred it. If it was £10 now, a lot of people are going to prefer it. But to conclude, it depends massively on the type of person you are. As I said, if you are a person that wants a constant goal with instant gratification, where you're always feeling like you're accomplishing something, then the game is simply not for you. However, if you enjoy relaxing games, where the fun stems from your own stories and discoveries and encounters, then it's perfect. You can shape your own journey and destiny and do what you want. So I would say torrent the game if you want to try it but you don't want to buy it the devs deserve their game to be torrented all right it's savage as fuck but they deserve it and if you like it then buy it if it ever goes below 10 pound 100 pick it up but i would say at this point in time just wait until updates come out wait until we have a better understanding of how the game will work and then perhaps no man's sky will be worth a purchase in 2000 and 17. So that is the end of the video guys. I do hope you enjoyed as always If you did enjoy then please do feel free to leave a like on the video If you guys could also subscribe to this channel, then that'd be absolutely fantastic And as always, I will see you guys on my next video. This is Kimbo Signing out <laughs>